Welcome to part 6. Today I'm going to show you how to add a custom shaped interaction area that fits better to our interactable actor. So go here to the interaction area and open it. Here make sure you're copying the box. Make sure you have copied it. Now you can delete it, close it, and let's rename the interaction area to interaction area underscore master. Now we can right click on it, create a child blueprint from it, call it interaction area underscore box. Let's open this and paste here our box. Um, we can close this again. Let's work again on our master and create another child and call it interaction area underscore custom shape. Let's open this as well. Uh, add here a static mesh, name it shape. Also increase the scale from 1 to 1.01. So it's slightly bigger because this is our trace area and it's wrapped around our actual mesh. So we're just making sure with this that we are actually can trace it from each side. Um, now we also need to change a bit the collision here, same as the box on the, the other actor. Set it here to custom, everything to ignore, except the visibility to block. Okay, now we can go to the construction script, grab here the shape, and set static mesh. Promote this new mesh here to a variable, make sure it's not to local variable. Promote, just promote the variable and name it custom shape. Okay, now we're creating another variable, this time a bool, and we call it def, and this should enable us in a development mode, in which we can, in which we can see the custom shape in editor, and then if it fits and we see it interaction tracing should be fine, then we can just disable it. Um, so, if the development mode is not on, false, then we can just take the shape, set the visibility to false, connect it here with the parent construction script, but if it isn't true, we're taking the shape mesh Getting the material slots, material slot names. So we're not getting confused with and making here forge for, connected with the forge loop. So we're not getting confused That's, that the trace area has the same material as our mesh. Uh, we can take like a transparent overlay mesh so we can see better if the trace area is adjusted correctly. So we are overwriting all material slots for this trace area development mode. We're taking the shape set material by name, connecting the area element with the material slot. And as material, we will create it now. So let's create here a new material, um, action, Trace shape or so. Let's open it. We're changing the we're changing it to unlit and from opaque to translucent. Adding a bit of opacity here. Maybe custom color like so 
Now we can compile and save it, close it again, and take here this material. Here, select it here. Then also uncompiled. Make sure to connect it here with the parent construction script. And now we can go and create our custom or other actor with uh, with a custom shape. Before we're doing that, we need one one quick thing. We need to go to our actor component here and inside the trace function. We have here checking if the class is master, but that won't work anymore. We need to check now if it's one of the two children. <coughs> so copy this, select here, change it here from master to interaction area, interaction area box, and in the other node to interaction area custom shape. Then here make an OR and select it with the trace interaction area. Now compile and save again. So you should only use from now on not the master but you should only use box or custom shape. So let's create here our new actor pp test shape so in here we we'll close the other two here and also open the interaction test actor so let's go to our test shape here we've just created i will add here a static mesh we will name it cone and select a static mesh here, shape cone. Then I will add child blueprint, child actor, and will select here as child actor, the interaction area, custom shape. Then I'll expand it, select here the shape cone, and enable dev. And then you will see the green overlay goes around, it looks nice and should be a good interactable. You can also increase the interaction time to two seconds or so, just for testing. And now we're seeing that it's nice and interactable. We can disable the dev mode. So now we need also the widget. We can just copy it from, from another blueprint where we have this interaction widget already set up so we don't need to do it here so just copied it from the test actor and paste it here um, then we also need to go on go on our mesh that should be should have the outline effect click on the mesh search here for custom dev uh, enable it so we can change the stencil value to one and disable it again. So just make sure that's by default here on one this disabled. So next step is going to the event graph and to the class settings and add here Add here an interface, take the BI interaction interface. Uh, now we can get here the interface toggle focus implement event. We can take our cone, set render cast death, set it here true. Other thing we need to do is going to the get interaction widget and plug in the widget. Now we can compile and save everything. Put in our custom shape. And let's test it. 
it was was lagging a bit, a bit packing. So you can see it works fine. The custom shape. Um, that's not working because that should have still the master applied as child actor. So let's apply here for this the box. The action area box. Compile and save again. Let's test it. You see. Also here, opens in two seconds or to act in two seconds. Yeah. Works really, really nice. <laughs> I'm happy with the result. I hope you are too. And I guess that's not the last part of the interaction system. There will be probably one more. We'll add a, a box that we can't interact from each side. That there will be maybe a, like a box in front and the character has to stand in it. And only then the the character or the player can focus the interactable actor. So I'm looking forward for that and see you in the next tutorial.